up. Say hi, Georgina. How are you? Oh, uh, hi, Megan. I'm good, thank you. Good. Are you working from home today? <laughs> I am. Um, Fridays are my university days. Okay. So, yeah, at the moment with everything going on, I always take them at home. Yeah, well, that's really nice that you like have that option. You can just wake up a little bit later. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. You tend to, you know, be able to plan your day out without any interruptions. It's good. Yeah, really nice. Cool. So which specialism are you on? So I am a first year STP on the haematology and transfusion pathway. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So um, whereabouts are you based? Then I'm not sure which ones do haematology. So I'm based at Addenbrookes in Cambridge mm. and uh, a lot of our patients are crossing over with Packworth. Okay. I'm going to nod and pretend like I know <laughs> where anywhere is. My geography is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know until I uh, moved here as well. So, mm -hmm. Did you not have, were you not like from the area then before you got the post? Oh, no, definitely. Um, I'm from Swansea in mm. South Wales yeah. and uh, I was working in Swansea when I got yeah. lost so yeah it involved <laughs> a bit of a move. Yeah that's a shame. Some people have ended up like staying in the same place that they went to uni. I think that's so like lucky. <laughs> yeah been... you know not having to do a big upheaval and mm. move everything that would, yeah. that would have been quite nice especially in the middle of all of this but mm. You gotta what go with the full star. What were you doing beforehand then in Swansea? So I was working for the NHS. Um, mm -hmm. I was working in science as a biomedical scientist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hematology as well. So yeah, are there quite a lot of biomedical scientists in hematology and transfusion? Yeah, so within the blood sciences network. Mm -hmm. A lot, well, basically all of the samples that are received are handled with, by BMSs. Mm -hmm. So is that something that the SCP is kind of like you're also going into that route or do you do more of like the analysis side of things? Um, as a BMS? Or? Uh, no, as like a clinical scientist or trainee. So a trainee, I would say the difference is between... Um, being a more medical science and a clinical trainee is that you have less to do with the day-to-day -day running of the lab mm -hmm. and more to do with the clinical side of the patients. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. What was your degree in? Did you do like a quite specialised degree or is it more of a general one? Um, so I had a bit of a strange route into the <laughs> STP. It's a little bit different from some people. I did biomedical science, which is you kind of cover a lot of the elements. You know, you do a bit of genetics, a bit of biochemistry, hematology, micro. Um, and then I I took a year out. Mm -hmm. I did some traveling. Um, I just took a step back from science and um, and then I decided that I really wanted to go into more uh, of a researchy side of things. So I did a master's mm -hmm. and uh, within the master's it was a biomedical one again but uh, you got to choose your focus area. So for me I chose haematology and transfusion so that was a little bit more of the theory of haematology combined with a bit more of research. Yeah. And then I just, I went completely um, in a different direction and did a PhD in, um, it was methodology. So I did a lot of proteomics and transcriptomics, which is mm -hmm. a lot more genetic and biochemistry elements. Um, but that was all research based, nothing to do with patients or the NHS or clinical side of things. And yeah, I just really missed the clinical side of things. Yeah. So uh, I kind of backtracked to my original degree. And then I got a trainee post in the NHS. So um, 
to practice as, as a biomedical science, you need to be HCPC registered. Mm -hmm. And in order to get to HCPC registered, you not only need the right um, accredited degree, you also need to have completed a portfolio. Okay. So a lot of um, degrees now offer the portfolio as part of your training. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to do that element portfolio side of it as a trainee before I could start working as a BMS. So yeah, I started as an associate practitioner, which is, um, so you're kind of in the labs, running a lot of the analyzers and dealing with the samples. And then I progressed into a trainee and qualified as a BMS then. Sounds like um, you now probably have a really good insight into the different tests and things um, from all of that experience. It's mad how much you've done. <laughs> it's it's strange because it sounds like a lot, but um, it was my kind of experience has been so varied that mm -hmm. I have had that chance to get honed in one specific area. Okay. So yeah, I learned so much from so different, so many different areas, and I learned lots of different skills that are transferable and applicable to lots of different situations, but not necessarily um, transfusion, hematology based. Yeah. yeah, it was really good for me because uh, I really had a chance to have a think about what I really wanted to do. And I had a chance to experience elements of different parts. So for mm -hmm. me, when I chose to do um, a blood sciences route, I knew that I already knew that was a route for me. Okay. It's nice to coming from such like a broad degree to find what it is that you really enjoy. Yeah. And there's so much given to you in BMS that <laughs> Yeah, honestly it was, it was really, really um I was lucky to get the experience I did. But um saying that, I am obviously a little bit older than some of the other trainees and people applying so um from my perspective I would say you don't need all that experience to be a trainee um being a trainee the program gives you everything you need that is why it's an accredited program but um I would definitely say for people who are thinking of doing the STP who have had a lot of experience that mm. it's definitely worth kind of taking a step back to get on the program yeah. yeah especially if it's what you want to do in the end oh yeah I wouldn't mm -hmm. let um the fact that you may have worked in one department for years and mm -hmm. years and years put you off going for it definitely yeah. not definitely that's such a good point what have you been doing so far then have you been based in hematology and transfusion or have you been like out on one of your rotations so um I've been really lucky. I know a lot of people have been affected by um, COVID with rotations and training. But for me, uh, I started in September. Uh, I had a few weeks to kind of get to know people in the lab, um, meet different people, go around to different areas. And then we had our university break. Mm -hmm. So our university break was, I think, five weeks. Uh, that's where we did all our um, training online for our masters. Yeah. Uh, came back and I went straight into a um, a department that does specialist hemostasis. So when you work in hematology, it's, even though it's all connected, it's divided into different areas. You've got your transfusion sections. You've got your hematology area. And then um, you've got your hemostasis or coagulation section. Mm -hmm. And within them, they all have specialist tests and they broaden out. But um, strictly speaking, those are the three kind of general areas. So we did that. And then I had the chance to do my immunology rotation. So mm -hmm. um, as a blood science trainee, you get to train in biochemistry hematology immunology and genetics oh, that's so, nice. yeah it's really good because you get a an over 
overview of all the sections. And that's really important from a clinical point of view because so many of the uh, the syndromes, the diseases, the um, problems that your patients are facing are not just based in one mm -hmm. specific area. So uh, things that are affecting haematology will undoubtedly affect biochemistry, haematology, and very often mm -hmm. genetics. Yeah, I see quite a lot of like referrals that are coming through um, with like a blood um, problem or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> And I think um, when you're looking at patient results um, from a clinical perspective, you need to understand the whole picture. Yeah. Especially um, biochemistry is an element that we look at a lot in hematology. Mm. Yeah, I spoke with a biochem trainee the other day and she was saying that she's just, or she's like in her coagulation. But at the moment, I just think it sounds so interesting, like the crossovers between them all. <laughs> it is so interesting, you know. Um, I could pick a case study on uh, that I'd be looking at in haematology mm -hmm. and bring in so many different elements to help me yeah. understand the whole picture. It's so interesting. And it, I think that's one of the good things about the STP that you don't see, um, well, I didn't get to see from the BMS side, mm -hmm. so you do really get, um, more opportunity to rotate and train and uh, get support in different aspects of the um, of the department. Yeah, definitely. It's just more of a like holistic view, I guess, of where your your specialism fits into the actual like diagnosis. I guess. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So you were saying that I'll probably forget one of the. Um, parts of it but you go and there's like the transfusion side and then the haematology side yeah um, like there's the different parts to it yeah. do you specialize then by the end in kind of one or do you um do a bit of everything so you get to do a bit of everything mm -hmm. um i think one of the defining elements about where you end up working afterwards is maybe what you do your project in. Mm -hmm. So if you have a project that's heavily um, coagulation based or transfusion based. Um, I know that clinical scientists that have qualified through the STP in the haematology pathway, where they are now, they are in more of a niche area. Mm -hmm. So I know a couple that have gone into coagulation and they really focus on that specialist area. Um, NHSBT has some clinical scientists and that's more of the transfusion aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I really find the, um, the oncology and haematology um, combined mm -hmm. side things interesting. So you do get um, haematology uh, based clinical scientists that have a lot more to do with leukemias and um, blood-based malignancies yeah. that's really interesting too but yeah you know you can go into any fo following the back of this mm. program. What kind of um, tests do you do then? Are you looking at like the specific so for the leukemias are you looking for the specific like blood cells that are in the blood or are you doing different things? So um, in a haematology lab the kind of one of the most important and major tests we do is the full blood count. Mm -hmm. It's one test, but it measures a lot of different parameters. So it will tell you if a patient um, has low platelets or um, high hemoglobin, low hemoglobin. It will tell you um, what's going on with the patient's white cells. Mm -hmm. So getting a full blood count you can see if someone is maybe bleeding if someone has a leukemia if um, someone has a viral infection mm -hmm. all these things that you can tell from the full blood count um, so you start off with the actual looking at the different aspects of each of the cells and then if there's something that's a little abnormal or something you want to look more into 
you can um, then go to morphology. So that's more micros microscope based work. And I love that side of it. I think that's is so interesting. But um, I think it's one of the skills that is going to take years and years and years to really, um, really hone. Um, so that's kind of the bread and butter side of it. Mm. Then you've got the coagulation side. So people who are on um, therapies for like warfarin or yeah. people who are on anticoagulants. Um, it We have tests that look at whether people have clots as well. So if someone's at risk of um, thrombosis, we look into that side of things. Um, and then the transfusion side, obviously, that's like another yeah. aspect of the of the whole um, lab. Do you get um just because I did like a little quiz thing yesterday, and one of the questions was on like haemophilia. Do you get patients with haemophilia and things like that as well, or is that? Um... Yes. So um, I'm so lucky that I've got to train here in Addenbrookes because. Um, the principal clinical scientist uh, in hemostasis here um, runs a huge lab that they do so many specialist tests and they have a haemophilia centre. Mm -hmm. So they get sent a lot of the work from different labs across the country. Um, yeah, that's a really interesting side of mm -hmm. haemostasis that I, um, I didn't get to see as a BMS, but mm -hmm. I'm now getting to be a lot more involved with as a trainee clinical scientist. That's good. Yeah, it's so interesting. And um, the the level of skill that I have in my department, it's just, I'm so <laughs> lucky that they like offered me a place, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's insane when you're getting like training from these people and then you look a little bit more into their backgrounds and you're like, oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, every single <laughs> person in the whole lab that I've come, I've met is mm. just really, really good at their job. Really mm. know everything about what they're specifically in charge of, and it's just yeah, that's mm. why what the STP gives people. So it doesn't matter what um, pathway you go down, the trust that offer places have the capacity mm -hmm. the skills and the facilities to support the training that you need which I think yeah. is why maybe why it's so competitive because yeah. there are very few places across the country that have not only the people and the staff and the space but the skills to mm -hmm. cover all these areas of specialisms definitely I don't know what it's like for other specialisms but with the genetics yeah. labs we've kind of been grouped into genomic laboratory hubs which is just kind of like there's the satellite center and then the spokes off or there's the main center and then the spokes off yeah so I don't know if that's the same for hematology or there are a lot of places that offer training positions um it's very much the same in hematology mm -hmm. um there aren't many hospitals that offer the placements for hematology Mm -hmm. So when I applied, there were only two positions across. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were both in the same hospital. And um, the year to this year, I know there were two more positions available. Um, I think not in my trust, but there's one in Bristol, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure where the other one is, but yeah. They're, That's crazy. <laughs> there are very few spots, so... Mm -hmm really have to make sure you stand out <laughs> that's crazy yeah so is there no other trainees with you then or are there other there are actually um oh. so, yeah so there were two <laughs> positions for my year um mm -hmm. so there's me and another stp called alex mm -hmm. and i'm so lucky as well that i have a trainee third year oh. um, yeah in hematology called tara and it's been so helpful and amazing having her there. She has given us so much advice and she's always there for support. And it's really nice to have someone that's kind of been in your shoes and mm -hmm. still going through the process. Um, the, 
there are a lot of trainees in our hospital as well. So mm -hmm. we try to form a kind of um, Cambridge based network. So we're all from dis different disciplines and we don't see each other every day or work together, but we all are in the programme together. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of overlap and we get to discuss things with each other. Yeah. It'll be nice as well once we're allowed to do things as well, you can go and actually meet them. <laughs> you know, it'd be, I think we arranged to meet once. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't actually meet up in person then, because, mm. you know, lockdown happened. And, mm. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but we've done a lot of this kind of online interactions, which I think it's become the norm for everyone now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we won't know what to do with ourselves once we're allowed out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so, is it quite patient-facing, or are you just in like the lab? Um, it's a very laboratory based mm -hmm. um, discipline saying that um, because of the um, the hemostasis and the thrombophilia centre yeah. um, we also have they have a department called HODS which is the heme oncology department mm -hmm. so having specialist departments in my hospital gives you the opportunities to attend a lot more clinics yeah. than you would in other, I'm not sure about other hospitals, but um, some of our um, competencies are based on patient facing aspects. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, more than some disciplines, but a lot less than the patient facing everyday contact. Yeah, because, um... I don't know I think I group it together a little bit with like vascular science and they are like fully patient facing oh, like, yeah. without like a patient there I would say compared to them it's yeah not, but uh, yeah more than you would think maybe mm, yeah sounds a bit like genetics we have a few competencies that we have to do but yeah. I think they're um like kind of covered with genetic counseling a little bit <laughs> oh, we don't yeah. so I know you guys are kind of are you good? blood sciences or well life sciences life science um, okay so you kind of I think you overlap a little bit with us but then you mm -hmm. overlap a lot more with the counseling side yeah so yeah. you're kind of in a niche of your own <laughs> yeah it is, I think it's hard to group things together isn't it like there are some yeah. that really neatly fit together and then there are others that just kind of feel like they've been classed <laughs> yeah <laughs> the drugs <laughs> yeah there is like I think that's what's different about the STP is that it's created pathways and um, job opportunities where maybe there weren't ones before yeah. and it, yeah it's a good way I think um, as someone who's kind of done a bit of research and has done a bit of um, lab based and then a little bit of um, patient contact I feel like this pathway kind of combines everything together and you get to do see all sides of it yeah best of both worlds yeah I think so <laughs> absolutely you mentioned earlier that you had your five weeks of uni yeah what did you get up to there have you had like your assessments for it or are they still to come so um what they did this year they kind of separated it out into the four disciplines so mm -hmm. They had heme, they had biochem, they had immunology and genetics and you had the weeks separated into yeah. those and then they added on um, professional practice which is more um, just a general overarching NHS kind of mm -hmm. element and then they had analytical methods so that's um, a module that combines all of the laboratory and um, testing across all the disciplines, some of them overlap. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they separated that out, then they had those two elements and it was all at home, which I have to say, it was super intense. Yeah. It was, I thought, oh, this is gonna be great. There's gonna be loads of time. There was not, it was <laughs> so jam packed and so yeah. intense. But um, it was really good that they recorded everything. So mm -hmm. I found myself since those university weeks have finished going back and re-watching lectures as and when so 
just before my immunology rotation, I went back over some of the immunology mm -hmm. stuff. And I think when you're rotating into a department and you're learning the principles from the uni side, yeah, I don't know, it just, it fits, it all goes mm -hmm. along really nicely together and you kind of get a more, a good grounding in that area. So yeah, I like that side of it. Yeah. But it's a shame that we didn't all get to meet up and get mm -hmm. the, you know, the nice experience mm -hmm. of all being in the same position together. Mm -hmm. Which university are you based at? At Manchester University. Okay, yeah, yeah. that was the same as us. It's quite, it did feel really intense. There was just yeah. so much on. I don't think they scheduled things well at all. They were like, this should take 45 minutes to an hour. I know. No. <laughs> I was like, so fair enough, some of the lectures would say it was, they were, you were scheduled an hour and they'd given you a 15 minute lecture. Yeah. If you had to pause it or write anything down, you know, mm. you over. But some of them even were physically, literally yeah. longer than the time allocated. So mm. every day I, I was, you know, I was running over every day. Yeah. It was intense. Mm -hmm. I, I did learn a lot and mm -hmm. I think the content was, for the most part, really impressive considering they had to kind of go online so quickly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Had you applied for the SCP before um, this year? No, I hadn't. Um, I thought about it for a while mm -hmm. and I kept thinking, oh, oh, I haven't got enough experience, you know, I've never worked in an NHS lab or oh, I've, you know, I haven't even ever done a portfolio and in my mind I kept putting it off. So when I did apply, I did get the position straight away, but I don't, I think, I think I should have maybe tried before, mm -hmm. even though I'm really glad the way things have worked out. I think if you have a mind to do it, you should just go for it. And then at least you understand and have a feel for the application process, mm -hmm. and kind of where you fall. Yeah. Yeah. I think go for it. Definitely apply. Mm -hmm. Don't put it off. But I was so lucky, really lucky. Even not getting on first time is such, like, you can take so much from it depending on kind of what your score is and how easy you found the questions to write and you can kind of work on that for the next year. Yeah. So what would you kind of advise to someone thinking of maybe going into haematology? I would say, hmm, um, definitely if you can get on an accredited course, that will give you the lab hours that you need. You'll get a, an opportunity to see what it is that happens. Yeah. And then you can really decide if it's for you or not. Um, I would say if you get the opportunity, so unlike me, who um, didn't use the chance to get my portfolio done with my undergrad, mm -hmm. um, I would say if you can do it, it's definitely something that is worth doing. Mm. Um, I'd say you don't have to get a lot of experience in a lab, but if you can get any kind of shadowing or mm. any NHS kind of um, position, you, you'll just get a feel, because the NHS to me feels like its own world. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what, what area of the NHS you um, you work in mm -hmm. you kind of can get a feel for the whole system yeah so just because it's not a hematology based experience doesn't mean it's not valuable for the STP yeah especially I think you can often volunteer can't you for kind of like just some I don't know with the children's hospital in Sheffield you could volunteer as like a play person oh, and go in and like play with them and I think especially if you were going into like a more lab based or not as patient facing role that might be something really useful because it shows that you're kind of keeping in mind that every sample you get through as a patient. Yeah, yeah definitely I think um, so I, I took a year out after my undergrad and I did something called um, Camp America. I don't know if you did it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> So I went to America and I worked with children with um, uh, struggling to become independent and work mm -hmm. independently. 
And for me, I personally feel like that experience has nothing to do with science, yeah. nothing to do with hematology. It made me know that I wanted to work somewhere in line with people mm. and helping people. But it also, I think, for in my applications and interviews, people always ask me about it. Yeah. It was it was the kind of side of things that people were like, oh, so you know, what did you learn? here and what kind of things did you do and yeah. like that was nothing to do with science but I feel mm-hmm. like it gave me a, like a nice broad experience that was welcome yeah. into the NHS interviews. Especially with children as well like I choose a children too and I think it shows that you understand like confidentiality and the importance of looking after like vulnerable people. Yeah definitely. Yeah. Any experience you can get working with people is yeah. so valuable for this kind of line of work. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Cool, perfect. Thank you so much for taking part in this. I feel like I've learned a lot that will actually help when uh, <laughs> I see patients coming in with different diseases. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's been so nice chatting to you and yeah. getting to like talk about my experiences. Yeah, thank you and have a lovely weekend. Right. And <laughs> yeah.